Hey guys, before I start, I just want to say that this circle is so much smaller than you would think. So I'm going to be real awkward and just stand right in the middle. But here we go. <laughs> you talk white. This sentence has been spat at me like poison from the mouths of my peers and handed to me like a participation trophy from the tongues of white people. When I was younger, I didn't realize white was a standard. Journalist Jean Demby once said, one of the paradoxes of racial discrimination is the way it can remain obscured even to the people to whom it is happening. In my eyes, this is an eloquent quote that describes how so many people are oblivious to how communication can be viewed as a way of discrimination. As I said earlier, people have always commented on how I speak. They usually talk about how I speak white, and when they say that, they mean that I have eloquence and articulation. These are things that aren't often associated with typical black speech. My whole life, I've never been black enough for the black community or white enough for the white community. Fast forward to today. I was asked to do a diversity training for my whole school's newspaper, not because I have any idea about how to train young journalists other than to be one, but because the way I speak has been a bridge between the black community and the media. How I'm speaking now is drastically different than how I speak with my friends. And so I'm gonna do a little Black Panther reference for you guys. <laughs> of, course, <laughs> of course, there's an expectation to hold myself professionally and not casually, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't whitewashing myself and able to be taken seriously. Code switching, combined with my personality and knack for words, has become my superpower. Code switching is basically changing the way that you communicate with others based on the environment in which you're in. So we all code switch. Look to the person at your right. Would you talk to them the same way that you speak to your mom? Look to the person to your left. <laughs> Would you speak to them the same way you speak to a priest? Would you text your spouse the same way that you text your boss? All of that is considered code switching. The idea of different sects of people having a distinct dialect is not revolutionary. Think about the wasps in upstate New York. Think about the southern bells in Georgia. We all know how languages vary across demographics. However, from a socioeconomic standpoint, black people have taken code switching to a whole new level. Many people have heard of Ebonics, and unfortunately, it's often associated with talking ghetto or using slang or having a lack of intelligence. But at its most basic definition, Ebonics is just black speech. In my opinion, I think that it really points to the intelligence of my people. I consider us all to be bilingual. We all share a secret language in a community, even if we haven't met each other. For all the black people in the room, we know that there is at least five different meanings when I say, you good? <laughs> and we also know that if I put whole in front of any noun, it adds credibility. So for example, I'm doing a whole ass TED talk right now. Not half, a whole TED talk. <laughs> And um, the Linguistic Society of America describes Ebonics as one of the most extensively studied and discussed varieties of American English. They've even found traces of West African linguistic patterns in our speech. So to kind of bring that back, all of black people from the slave trade come from West Africa. And so the speech patterns that they use is still traced in our language today. Ebonics is another way that we brought Africa to America. But why is black speech considered ghetto? And why is white a standard? These are all questions that came to my mind after a trip to Chicago. See, there's code switching. <laughs> what does any of this have to do with discrimination? So over the summer, I really wanted to travel, and I saw that Solange was headlining at Pitchfork Music Festival in Chicago. So I'm a broke college student, and I scraped my money together, and I got a mega bus ticket and got a really cheap Airbnb, not thinking that the cheapest Airbnb was on the south side of Chicago. So I give the Lyft driver my address and I'm really excited and he looks at me and he's like, are you visiting, visiting your family? And I was like, no, like I'm here to see Solange. And <laughs> he goes, um, will you text me to make sure you're safe? Because that was the type of environment I was putting myself in. And he was genuinely scared because of that. So yes, I was scared. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but I was like, you know what, we're here, let's do this. So that being said, one night I really, really, really wanted fried chicken. So this is, where we get here, fried chicken and cilantro. Um, I really, really wanted fried chicken, and so I called a friend that I met at Kent, and he's a really great guy, he's really involved in the community, and he's just always been so great. So I called him and I said, what's good, like, can you take me to get chicken? I refuse to leave after dark, because I'm not walking around in Chirac, 
it's not happening. So he picks me up and we're driving around and we pull up to the chicken spot and I knew it would be good because it had bulletproof windows. So you know like <laughs> the chicken is gonna be great. So I get out the car and he doesn't follow me. And so I look at him and I'm like, what's good? Like not going in here alone and he still doesn't get out the car. So I sit back down and he lifts his shirt and he has a gun. And I'm like, okay, like it, anything could happen right now, but I can't run because I'm on the south side of Chicago. So I said, let's talk about it and take me to another spot because I'm so hungry. And then <laughs> he told me he ended up being in a gang. And so it was like three seconds that felt like 20 minutes where I was like, what are you doing? You're not with your family. You have zero money because I work at Starbucks and I'm a student, but let's talk about it. I am a journalist. So I was like, this is the time. How many times will you be sitting next to a Southside Chicago gang member? And so I said, how did you get into this type of lifestyle? And he said that although Chicago is portrayed negatively on the news, it's not as bad as you would think. However, it's still a kill or be killed mentality. That being said, gangs are more like a deep affiliation and it's more of a way to protect yourself. And I still wasn't necessarily buying it because you know, everyone's like, oh, gangs, whatever. But um, so he said, think about it as if you're going into Iraq. Would you rather have a team of American soldiers by your side or would you wanna walk in there alone? I would always choose the soldiers, and he chose his. So let's take a step back again, because this is being filmed. I am not condoning illegal violence or gun use, and I don't want us all to find our local gang member and take them out to lunch. But I want you guys, <laughs> I want you guys to think about how deeply he code switches, that I've known this man for so many years of my college career, but I had no idea about his life. And I really wanted to tell you guys that I was lying about that entire story. But the fact that you guys listened and were inclined to believe in me is because I code switch. If he stood in front of the same panel of judges, he probably would not have gotten a TED Talk. But I am articulate enough for you guys to have trust in me and believe in me and have me do this TED Talk. The way I communicate my thoughts has granted me access to more opportunities than I can count. That in itself is a privilege. Now this is not a shot at anyone's intelligence or brilliance. It is a fact that the wider someone speaks, the more inclined we are to believe in what they have to say. That goes for the white community, that goes for the black community. When someone stands in front of you and speaks in a whitewashed sense, we are more inclined to believe that what they have to say is important. However, the most brilliant and creative people I know think that y'all is definitely the proper way to refer to any group of people, and they definitely will, will argue up and down that conversate is a word, which it's not, so please stop saying conversate. <laughs> Our conversations between my friends use about 12 terms from Urban Dictionary, but their opinions are in no way more or less valid than my own because they articulate them differently. However, we may never have the same opportunities. I am a part of a program for incoming freshmen of color, and so I kind of uh, see them through their process, and I was talking to one, and she said that she was developing anxiety around talking at Kent. And I was like, talking? Like, what's wrong? Like, you're in college, you can speak. And she says that in her dorm, the white girls on her floor continued to laugh at her and said, the way you speak is so black. And it broke my heart because she looked me in the eyes and she said, they kept laughing, but I was never telling a joke. She doesn't raise her hand in class anymore. And that was the worst thing that I could, hear, could have heard that day. And she became ashamed because society was telling her that her blackness was a novelty, something that is entertaining but not taken seriously. And that's just, it should never be that way. I do believe there should be a standard for how we speak. I don't think we, use, we should use profanities and slang wherever and whenever, but we need to stop making white a standard. We can have these conversations and we can teach our black children how to code switch without making them ashamed of their culture. The same way Jewish kids can seamlessly switch between Yiddish and English, we can encourage the kids to hold on to Ebonics. Let's stop letting communication polarize our communities. I wonder if the cure for cancer is in the hood, but no one wants to invest in a child who only speaks Ebonics. I wonder if the cure for world hunger is also in the hood, but they have not been getting, given a seat at the table because their words ebb and flow like honey instead of falling into grammatically correct sentences. Thank you.